We couldn't wait. You had time to find an apartment. You didn't have five minutes to just run this idea by Excuse me. Excuse me, but I didn't think that I needed your permission to, to get a place. Well, give me one good reason why I shouldn't have found a place of my own. The both of you. Just shut the hell up. You, you can't expect me to stand here and watch you destroy your marriage. I love you guys. Well, we love you too, honey, and I'm sorry. I shouldn't have picked such a public place to have this discussion. Public? Maria, this is your home. And instead of laying a guilt trip on her, why don't you just ask her to stay and work this out? It's a little more complicated than that. No, it's not. You two love each other. I know. I saw you fall. I saw how blissed out you were on your wedding day. I remember thinking... Please, God, let there be somebody who will look at me the way that Edmund looks at her. And I've never seen my sister so happy. If there were ever two people who were meant to be together, it was you two. Look, I'm sorry that this and, is... And now look at you. Separate beds, separate lives. You really want to ring in the New Year in some dinky apartment somewhere, and you sitting here brooding by yourself? Is this how you want to spend Christmas? Shouting each other down? Whatever happened to peace on earth, goodwill toward men. In case you haven't noticed, this world is a horrible place. It's full of wretched, lonely people who will never know the kind of love that you guys lucked into. And it's still there. You just have to stop and see how crazy you're acting and fix it. Well, Julia... Look, I'm sorry that this upsets you, okay, but we have got some very real problems and they're not going to go away overnight. Fine. Take all the time you need. Take a lifetime. But work it out. It's not that simple. Yes, it is, if you love each other. Do you? Look, I'm no expert, but I know that you can't fix things by running away. Fight each other, you lose for sure. Fight for each other, you can't lose. Or don't you even care? Forget it. Wait, wait, wait. I thought we were going to dinner. Take your husband. I have some place I have to be. At this hour? Where? Noah convinced me to do what you won't. To try to fix my problem. I'm going to one of those group counseling places. Oh, honey, that's great. Well, can I go with you? Noah and Grace are taking me. Well, there's got to be room for one more. I'm sorry. You can't use me as an excuse to avoid dealing with your own life. Me to go in with you? No, thanks. We'll be right here. So you, you stay in there as long as you need to. Right. Grace. It's okay, honey. It's all right. When you walk in, you just remember one thing. The women in there, they know better than anybody what you're feeling. You don't have to be afraid of them. You don't have to be afraid of anyone. Right? Hi. I'm Brett Daniels. Welcome. There's some coffee over there. No, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Would you like to have a seat? We're about to start. Oh, I think that I'll just uh, hang out here for now, okay? Whatever works. Would everyone please be comfortable? Mm -hmm. 
For those of you who are first timers, my name is Brett. I'm a certified social worker. This is my 10th year on staff at PV Community College and my eighth running this support group for women whose lives have been devastated by rape. No one's nervous, right? Scared, sad, depressed, ashamed, embarrassed. It's all right to feel some of those things, or all of them. Just don't feel like you're alone, because you're not. Not anymore. I'd like to get some stats out of the way right at the top. There is no stereotypical, quote-unquote, rape victim. You're women with lives and jobs and husbands and families and lovers. Rape is the fastest growing violent crime in America. Rape is any kind of sexual activity committed against a woman's will. Rape is not your fault. You did not get raped because you walked down the street with a short skirt or flirted or led somebody on. You weren't asking for it. You didn't invite terror into your lives. Your lives were changed forever without your permission. But with your permission, you can take your lives back. The purpose of this group is to help you rediscover the hidden strength within you. This is not a group for victims. This is a group for survivors. Talk to that girl, Noah. The proof's right in there. She got a thing for Anton. I pulled her off the street, that's all. And tried to help her keep her head together. Don't go jacking it up to be more than it is. You helped turn Julia's life back in the right direction. You got eyes, Noah. You saw what Julia had to do. Why can't you take a good long look at your own life and turn yourself around? I'd like to shatter a few myths here tonight. Rape is an equal opportunity destroyer. It happens in the slums and in the suburbs. It happens to women of every color and every age. Rape is not a sexual act. It's an act of violence an act of aggression. Rape is always traumatic. Some women are able to fight back. Others, for whatever reasons, cannot. If you were raped and you're here now, you did the right thing because you're alive. After the rape, your immediate response can range anything from numbness and disbelief to extreme anxiety and agitation. But however you respond, you need and deserve support. Once you're in a safe environment, you may allow yourselves to experience the full impact of what's happened to you. And the responses from our loved ones can affect us at this time. You may experience a kind of calm before the storm. It may last for weeks, months, even years. And then something will trigger the memory of the rape. And you're going to again feel like you've lost control of your life, just like you did when you were being raped. Many women join support groups like this one. Because here you'll meet other women who are also trying to figure out what's happened to them. Two, get rid of false guilt and get a good self-image. We need to direct our anger outward at the rapist, 
not at ourselves. The best way to do that is going to be to talk about your experience. Now, this is by no means a requirement, but if any of you here feel tonight that you'd like to share your feelings with the rest of us, you don't have to be afraid. Just remember, you're not alone. No, I'd, I'd like to tell you what happened to me. It's, it's kind of hard. It's okay if you've changed your mind. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. No, I, I want to. My uh, name is Jenny, and I was raped in my home while my four-year-old son lay sleeping down the hall. A minute ago, you were slopping all over me, telling me what a hero I was, making sure Julia got down here. Now I ain't nothing but a no-account loser again, is that it? You give me a compliment in one hand, you snatch it back with the other. Nagin's your best event, Grace. Tony used to say the same thing. Mama, why are you all have to nag me so much? You, you know, it's cool sometimes, Grace. You gotta work on your timing. You're right. Just be glad you got Julia the help that she needed. That's all that counts right now. And it counts for a lot. My, uh, my husband was out of town on business, and um, I had uh, I locked up the house, and I'd gone upstairs to check on my little boy, and I went to bed. I woke up in pitch black, and I could tell that there was someone in the room. I called out my son's name, and a strange man's voice came back. Shut up, or I'll kill you. I felt my blood run cold. I wanted to scream, but I was, I was afraid for my son, so I, I just lay there. He, um, he pinned my arms down and he, he gagged me with duct tape and he had a knife which he held against my throat the whole time. I just thought, dear God, just let him do what he wants, but please don't let him kill me. <laughs> please don't let him hurt my little boy. When it was over, he said that if, um, if I called the police, that he would know it and that he would come back and kill me. He, um, he took a watch and um, a gold chain that my husband had given me for our anniversary and then he left. I, um, I don't know how long I lay there, maybe five minutes. And, um, and then I went to check on my son and, and thank God he was just still in his room asleep. I went into the kitchen and I turned on the light and there was this open carton of milk sitting on the counter. I don't know why that made me so angry. This animal raped me and then he came out into the kitchen and he drank our milk. I was furious. So I wasn't, I didn't want to call my husband so I, I just took a shower and I changed the sheets on the bed and I just sat up not feeling anything until morning. I made breakfast for my son and I took him to school and I just tried to pretend that nothing had happened. I wasn't going to tell my husband, but when he got home he could tell that something was wrong. I was so afraid to tell him. I was afraid he wouldn't love me anymore. changed my life forever. You know, still some nights I wake up in a cold sweat and I can still, still feel the edge of his knife on my throat. I don't think I'll ever tell my son what happened. I don't want to rob him the way that I was robbed. Because that's how I feel. Something was ripped out of my soul that night and I'll never, ever get it back.
trying's good, don't apologize. Just reflex, you know. Women who've been raped somehow feel it's their fault. It's not. Would you like to share what happened to you with the group? It's fine. Right. You don't have to talk if you want to. You've taken a giant step just coming here tonight. Recovery is a long process. I hope you'll come back again next week. Hey. You see, you're still standing. Are you okay? No. <laughs> I'm getting there. Take me home. 